scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because we are edified and Christ will remain glorified in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, New Heritage Baptist Church, for the opportunity to come live, bringing the Word of God. And um, it's going to be a brief session, but I know that it will be a very powerful moment. And I thank all who are following from around the world. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Now, please, two quick announcements, two quick announcements before we get to the ministry of the Word. Number one is, as you may have been told, um, for those who are in the church, members of New Heritage Baptist Church, please make sure your prayer requests, I'm going to be praying on your requests, so make sure your prayer requests are, um, I, I don't know, you collate it if you can, so that I just speak from here. For those who are connecting from different platforms, your homes and everywhere, um, it, is, it is important that you have your prayer requests. You can quickly write them somewhere along the line. I'm going to be speaking over them by faith and will trust God for a great miracle. Number two, it is also an impartation service. Um, so I would want you to, if you have a bottle of oil uh, by faith, for those connecting in your homes, you can just bring your bottle of oil by faith. Remember, the power is not in the oil. The power is not in the ritual. The power is in the faith according to scripture. Okay, so please, uh, I want you to understand that. But then I'll be praying on your oil so that you'll just anoint yourselves. And I believe that there is a system already in church, New Heritage Baptist, to make sure that um, the oil gets round to the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, our time is fast spent, and I just trust God to come with an exhortation, and then we'll go straight to pray, and then I'll minister. The last, um, the first session that I had, let me do a quick recap for the sake of those who are just connecting. I began to speak about the keys, the principles that would help us activate possibilities. The Bible says, for with God, for with God, he says, all things are possible or nothing shall be impossible that means that when god is part of an equation nothing is impossible we're dealing with possibilities here and i did share with us that the kingdom is built on systems built on systems and it's very very important for us to understand the systemic character of the word of god uh, that there are laws that the saints operate by and these laws grant us an opportunity to be able to experience the life of god at a superior level please listen very attentively uh, we discuss the law of faith from numbers 23 19 the bible declares that god is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent and so it, it's very very important for us to understand that the integrity i did speak about the conviction that comes based on the integrity of god and his ability please do not forget this 
that our faith in this kingdom is predicated upon number one the integrity of God his unbendedness that when God says a thing we can trust him because he he is faithful to bring that which he speaks to pass and then number two his ability that God is El Shaddai the multi-breasted one all powerful he is able to do above and beyond that which we think or ask and so it is important and I did tell us that the Bible contains promises the Bible contains principles the Bible contains prophecies so when we begin to explore scripture we find the principles that are attached to the promises and the possibilities that we desire that we meditate upon these things until understanding comes to us and then number two when we gain understanding we now understand our participatory role we need to know what role we have to play in actualizing or committing God or bringing a performance of the things that we have believed. Praise the name of the Lord. That is very important. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says um, that without faith it is impossible to please him. Whoever comes to God must come believing that he is, he exists, and that he is the rewarder of all them that diligently seek him. Faith is very important. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. The next principle or the next um, requirement, kingdom mystery that I'll be sharing very, very briefly and then we'll pray is spiritual empowerment. This is the second key that we need if we want to do exploits in this kingdom, if we want to rise to levels and dimensions where we are able to do so much for the kingdom. We need to be empowered spiritually. It is very, very important. The Bible is full of men and women who were very ordinary. But when they were empowered of the spirit, empowered of the anointing, the Bible begins to record the exploits that they did. Hallelujah. Now, generally, let me say this. I wrote something down here and I would like to just, just observe it before we continue. You see, we are equal in Christ. Please understand this. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. The same blood atoned for our sins. The same opportunity in Christ is given unto us. But we are all separated by three principal factors. Please listen. The reason why some people seem to be at certain levels of possibilities above others, generally speaking, is based on three factors. Number one, um, the quality of information that you have access to. It matters how you are taught. It matters the framework of your belief system. It matters the kind of spiritual information or the kind of information generally that you are exposed to. So all men are different based on people become uh, the possibilities in their lives, I mean now, become um, that disparity happens because of their, their various degrees of access to different levels of information. If I sustain a superior knowledge, my life will demonstrate superior results. If I sustain inferior knowledge, then inevitably my life will demonstrate some results that may not even be glorifying to God. So it is important for us to understand that generally speaking, men are distinguished by the level and the access and the quality of the information that they have. Number two, the kind of relationships and associations that they have in honor to and of that superior belief system because every belief system translates you to a realm where you will meet like-minded people there will always be a circle that reflects your belief system so when you access superior knowledge that knowledge is able to translate you to a realm and a dimension where you begin to be exposed to strategic relationships and associations those associations provide leverage those associations provide opportunities for you to rise to superior dimensions in lives and then to to command results that are outstanding and then number three the quality and the dimension of spiritual empowerment that you have access to. So number one, we are distinguished by 
the kind and the quality of knowledge that we have. Number two, the relationships and the advantageous connections that we have in our lives. Then number three, the dimension of grace, the dimension and the level of the anointing that is upon you. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, it says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was anointed lavishly with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says, who went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed, for God was with him. So in as much as we are same in Christ, our possibilities are governed by these factors. And now I want to just touch on one of them, spiritual empowerment. We live in a world where several people um, want to achieve supernatural results but in the strength of the flesh. The Bible clearly tells us that the flesh profited nothing. That means it is impossible to rise to a level of outstanding results, a level where your life brings glory to the name of the Lord, a level where your life begins to reveal Christ in experience and bring glory to the same if you are not empowered. Spiritual empowerment is very important. Jesus mentored a group of people for a period of three and a half years and when he died he came back to life in the book of Acts chapter 1 he was together with them and then he continued his curriculum teaching them on the matters of the kingdom he told them tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power zeal is not enough sincerity of heart is not enough the purity of motif is not enough as important as these factors are we need to be empowered especially in today's world hallelujah this is very very important spiritual empowerment is important in ministry it's important for business it's important for family in in the bible you would read especially in the old testament people were not allowed to serve any dimension of kingdom purposes without an encounter with the holy ghost that brought them empowerment of different sorts and at different levels. Then they began to command uh, various levels of exploits. And generally in the kingdom, please listen carefully, spiritual empowerment happens um, through two channels principally. Spiritual empowerment occurs through two channels. Number one is the prophetic. The prophetic. The prophetic is the first platform that avails the saints the opportunity to be empowered. Now, let, let me pause here and just, um, I'm, 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 I'm so touched even just talking about this now because um, when I talk about the prophetic already, there are people who um, have all kinds of negative ideas. And, and I, I sincerely understand that uh, a lot is happening in the body of Christ when it has to do with the prophetic because um, I know that it's been exaggerated, especially the apostolic and the prophetic ministry, generally speaking. And um, I'm not teaching human worship. I'm not teaching subjugation. I'm not teaching um, glorifying men above the Christ. That's not the idea. In as much as I know that there have been these excesses and imbalances, it's no news in the body of Christ. And I know that God is patiently helping his body, uh, his bride to come coming to that point of conformity. But then I think in a bid to manage the excesses that has come from depending on men and the place of prophecy, we are now throwing the baby and the bathwater. Just because um, we as ministers may have failed to bring balance to the context of the role that men and prophets and apostles uh, play in the life of people, it does not necessarily mean that the concept is wrong. I think it is just the imbalance around it because I know that there are people who teach and you know make it look like you don't need any man to rise all you need is just the word of God but number one don't forget that the scripture that we read was inspired of the Holy Ghost but it was written by men it took men inspired of the spirit to write it Jesus himself needed to become a man to redeem men as powerful as he is and he was as God, he needed to become a man. You will always need men in the equation of your success. 
and there are people that God has anointed there are people who are conduits of his possibilities gifts that he has provided that within the context of balance and within the context of hearts that are determined to exalt Jesus the prophetic and the apostolic ministry is powerful so powerful that when uh, um, I mean Apostle Paul was teaching he said that the kingdom is built the system of heaven is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Christ himself being the chief cornerstone even in heaven the foundations are built with the names of the apostles of the Lamb so it's important for us to understand that the prophetic is very important in activating possibilities in our lives it provides a platform for creating possibilities it provides a platform for lifting and in the name of Jesus, I believe that as you are following, as you are watching, as your heart is connecting, that word is coming into your life to activate supernatural possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself, like you may have heard me say, even though he was the Logos of God who became a man, he needed to be at the mercy of men. It took men at age 12 to teach and mentor him in the tenets of the law. And when he was 30 years old, the Bible says, he went to Jordan and he took a man John the Baptist to baptize him and open him up to his messianic ministry when he died it took men to bring him from the cross to the to the uh, the grave and then that supernatural miracle happened and it's taken men today to let creation know that Jesus is Lord so the ministry of the prophetic the ministry of men and women empowered by the Spirit to speak over the lives of the saints it is very important and it is it, it is it is more important especially in the days that we live in now you need an encounter with the prophetic hallelujah very very important Hosea chapter 12 please and verse 13 the Bible says and by a prophet Hosea 12 and verse 13 and by a prophet he said the Lord God brought them out of Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved so the Lord brings people out by prophecy and he preserves them by prophecy and by a prophet it was the Lord that brought them out but he did it by the instrumentality of a prophet and he preserved them so God is the doer but the the instruments that he used are his prophets and apostles this is very important you are listening to the word of the lord now is the holy ghost speaking yes but he's using a human vessel who has availed himself to be used by god new heritage baptist church is being blessed coming into conformity with the prophetic word but it took a man your pastor your man of god to communicate the counsel of god please listen to me do not ignore the ministry of men do not ignore the ministry of the prophetic in activating possibilities in your life it's amazing how we can scrounge around trying to find direction for our lives and one encounter with a true apolic and prophetic dimension can shift us to levels we never imagined let me show you a scripture the bible says in second kings chapter 7 second kings chapter 7 uh let's look at it very quickly from verse 1 to 8 second kings chapter 7 this was the story of the miracle that happened in the land of samaria there was famine as you know women were eating their children then elisha said verse 1 hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time now listen if it was just about speaking anybody would have said this but now a man is speaking under the influence of the spirit he said a fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria verse 2 then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said behold if the Lord will make the windows of heaven open you know might this thing happen etc etc let's go to verse 5 let's go to verse 5 the Bible says they rose up at twilight 
to go to the camp of the Syrians, the four lepers now. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp, there was no man there. Look at the miracle that happened because a prophetic word came. What happened? Verse 6 says, for the Lord had made. Now watch this. Very interesting. A prophet is speaking and then they go to the camp four lepers now get up remember when prof when the prophet was speaking here the four lepers were not there when he spoke he spoke from the gate of of of, of samaria and then the spirit of god in honor to that prophetic word began to move four lepers and they took a step of faith and the lord made the host of the syrians to hear a noise of chariots a noise of horses even the noise of great horses and they ran away and left the people read verse 7 please go to verse 7 wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses their sheep their asses even at the camp as it was they fled for their lives last verse verse 8 the bible says and when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried ten silver watch this it was not just supply in terms of food they had silver they had gold they had raiment they went and hid it and came again and entered into another camp they had abundance even as the prophet spoke now, you would think that um, God did not want to bless the nation of, 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 of Israel, his people, the people in the land of uh, uh, Samaria. You would think that God just sat in heaven and was just watching these people languish. No, he was waiting for that ministry of the prophetic to allow his outstretched arm and his power did you know that you can be in a situation for a very very long time and it will look as though god is helpless concerning your situation because remember it is god that created these ordinances you will be surprised that at the instance of a true prophetic word all of a sudden it looks like all heaven begins to move towards you and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God may heaven begin to move on behalf of someone on behalf of a family on behalf of an individual in the name of Jesus Christ turn things around overturn things in the name of Jesus sudden miracles supernatural performances of the Spirit restorations healings in the name of Jesus Christ Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 very powerful and instructive scripture Ezra chapter 6 please and verse 14 please be sure to write these scriptures down so that you can study them when you're having your time with the Lord he says and the elders of the Jews build it so he's talking about building now he's talking about doing something that was not there he says and they prospered not because of the dexterity of their instruments of building he said they prospered to the prophesying they prosper to the prophesying they prosper to the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo the Bible says they built it and finished it amazing that while the architecture was going on physically there was the voice of prophets speaking and saying building be complete building be finished and the Bible records that that speaking contributed to making the building finished Finish. It says they prospered through the prophesying. Let me speak to someone by the Spirit tonight in the name of Jesus and according to the election of grace that every mountain that has stood before you this year 2020 I stand in the name of Jesus I declare it will fall before you like Dagon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ everything that has mocked the name of the Lord in your life I stand by the Spirit of faith and by the grace of God to declare that doors are open I speak over the two lived gates that stand to shut you from your next level I declare in the name of Jesus these gates are opened these doors are opened sudden miracles for you in the name of Jesus Christ I believe in the prophetic I believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost invested upon men and women and God can coordinate them to your life and they can become conduits of spiritual possibilities. Very quickly, let's look at the second platform for spiritual empowerment. It's called impartation, Psalm 23. It's called impartation. So the prophetic is one of the platforms that gives us the privilege to be empowered. 
and then the second for the sake of time is impartation psalm 23 verse 5 psalm 23 and verse 5 thou preparest a table before me hallelujah in the presence of mine enemies then it says thou anointest my head with oil as a result my cup runneth over notice god does not anoint the cup he anoints your head with oil and then your cup begins to show the results thou anointest my head with oil my church my ministry begins to produce results thou anointest my head with oil my spiritual life takes another dimension thou anointed my head with oil my finances take another dimension thou anointest my head with oil my business and my career steps into another dimension it is important for us to believe in the power of impartation what is impartation very briefly impartation is the transference of spiritual possibilities the transference of spiritual possibilities the transference of spiritual possibilities impartation is not just the coming of oil or the laying of hands upon you know impartation is not just falling down to roll under the influence of the spirit those, those things are just manifestations impartation has to do with a system that provides transference now this is how God does it everything God places upon a man his intention is that that which is upon that man is distributed across the body of Christ. So if God puts a healing anointing upon Pastor Benny Hinn, the goal is not for Benny Hinn to be the only career. He may have a unique ministry of healing, but that through that vessel, for instance, he can become a channel and a conduit. If God places a grace of favor upon an individual, the goal is that people can, it can become an avenue for everyone to have access to it. So when he sends a word to Jacob, in his mind, he's thinking Israel. God never intends, listen carefully, God never intends that the grace that he puts upon men for the body just remain with those men. Now, when God calls a man, there is a unique anointing upon that man's life as a result result of his office but there are anointings that God puts upon individuals not just for their benefit alone but so that they can be distributors of that possibility and I've said it again and again that every result in the kingdom is governed by the grace and the empowerment that is upon your life it is true there is a grace that controls favor please listen please listen new heritage baptist church and then the believers who are following there is a grace that controls favor there is a grace that controls speed there is a grace that controls restoration there is a grace that controls um the the manifestation of of creativity there is a grace that causes men to love you these things do not just happen and god invests this grace on individuals and expects that they be distributors of this possibility to the body of Christ very very powerful impartation is true by the Spirit of God impartation is true first Samuel chapter 10 please first Samuel chapter 10 Kabo Sabranda Kaso de Balakata I'd like you to lay your hands on your head wherever you are in one minute and say, Lord, my heart is open to receive. My heart is open to receive. My heart is open to receive. Declared by the Spirit. Whatever nation, whatever city, declare by the Spirit. My heart is open to receive. In the name of Jesus, it's time for me to shift to dimensions where my life becomes a greater expression of the power, the glory, the grace, the possibilities that are in the kingdom. It's time to leave these levels, these inferior levels of kingdom representation to higher dimensions of possibilities in the spirit the bible says in first samuel chapter 10 and verse 1 this was saul now his encounter with samuel then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said is it not because the lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his 
inheritance. Notice, he never said, please go back to verse 1. He never said that, is it not because I have anointed you? No. He said, the Lord has anointed you. But we don't see any angel appearing in his presence. We don't even see God appearing. We see a man, Samuel, taking a vial of ordinary oil, pouring it upon the head of a weak man who is in need of restoration. And he looks at him and says, I am doing this acting out something that is the intention of God. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you that he has sent me to speak and release something upon your life? Is it not because there is a prophecy upon your destiny that you are rising and shaking off the dust, rising to superior dimensions in the spirit? Listen, let me tell you, impartation works. You can know the kind and the level of grace that is upon your life by the possibilities that you command. When you find out you are trying and trying and trying and certain doors don't open, you are trying and trying and trying and certain possibilities don't seem to be captured in your life. There may be a number of things to check. You may need to check knowledge, you may need to check action and so on and so forth, but then you need to come to a point where you may have to admit that I need impartation, a transference of that possibility. Hallelujah. God is blessing New Heritage Baptist Church right now, blessing believers all around the world from this broadcast. But then you must understand that it took a man, a man of God, Pastor Julius Omomola, and God anointed him in an unusual way and caused him to create an opportunity for this to happen. Listen, men can limit the workings of God in your life. It is true. And within these few minutes that we have, I want your heart to be open. I have seen what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do in the life of a man. That God can take you from a dunghill and lift you to dimensions in the spirit that you may never believe possible. New Heritage Baptist Church, I believe that you are entering a new season. A new season of spiritual hunger. A new season of awakening. A new season of supernatural manifestations of the hand of God. And many who are following online, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ that you are stepping into new dimensions. Please, I want you to believe this. These are not just the speakings of men. This is not just a motivational talk. The Bible says the things we have seen, the things we have heard. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you